Welcome, and thank you for watching Cape Cod Arts with John Murrell. Cape Cod Arts is dedicated to exploring the arts scene from Falmouth and Bourne to Wellfleet and Provincetown, and everywhere in between. Each program will include a noteworthy review, as well as highlights for upcoming events. In addition, there'll be an interview of an interesting person in the arts from Cape Cod. The arts encompass the visual arts, literary arts, of course, the performing arts, music, theater, dance, film, among many others. A bit of advice. The arts around us can only inspire us if we get in our car and go, right? It does take some effort on our part, and I believe there's always another thing for us to do, right? I suggest that you build in arts time into your week. Plan an event on Friday when the Cape Cod Times puts out its calendar section. Invite a friend and plan a meal afterwards. Symphony one week, a museum opening the next. Drive down to Wellfleet and attend a production at the Wellfleet Harbor Actors Theater. Give it a try. Here's another bit of advice. Recently I went to a lecture on food and the one bit of advice the lecturer gave me is that when I'm in the produce section, pick one or two pieces of uh, uh, vegetable or fruit produce that I've never had before and expand my vocabulary and my understanding of produce. I want to suggest that to you. Try to attend an event that you wouldn't necessarily go to. If you're a symphony person, try a musical at the Katuit Center. Or if you're a gallery person, try a dance event. There's no guarantee that you're going to enjoy all these productions, but you're never going to know until you see it. This is the time in the show where I talk about my favorite events coming up on the Cape. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recommend the Cape Cod Symphony. On October 8th and October 9th, Cape Pops, Jazzin' with Pizzarelli, a fresh look at classic favorites. Jung Ho Pak conductor, John Pizzarelli on guitar with his trio. There was an interesting um, article in the Cape Cod Times called Working Men, Working Boats, a photographic exhibit by Milton Moore. This is being presented at the Cape Cod Maritime Museum, 135 South Street in Hyannis, now through December 18th. It's a fabulous exhibit. Coming up in the middle of October, October 15th at 1 o'clock and October 16th at 12 o'clock is the HD performance of the Mets production of Gaetano Donizetti's Anna Bolena. This is the opening of the season. Uh, in the title role of Anna Bolena is Anna de Trebko, um, one of the finest singing actor, actresses in the world today. I highly recommend the HD performances. Um, it's certainly easier than going to the Met, and um, it's, it's a thrill to watch. Finally, if you're interested in uh, opera that is living and breathing right in front of us, Opera New England of Cape Cod will be bringing in Puccini's Tosca, Friday evening, October 28th at 7 p.m. This is a touring production based out of New York City. It will be performed at the Tilden Arts Center at the Cape Cod Community College. And these are my picks for the next month. Every once in a while, there's an arts event off the Cape that I'm drawn to attend. I get the feeling that it's worth the extra trouble to drive over the bridge and venture to Boston or beyond. A few weeks ago, I discovered that the Lyric Stage in Boston was producing Big River, a musical based on Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. 
Debuting on Broadway in 1985, over 25 years ago, this charming and energetically positive musical cleaned up at the Tony Awards. Best musical, best score, best book, among other awards. The current revival at the intimate lyric stage on Clarendon Street delivers with talent and new ideas. At a time when theater is packed with the usual revivals and remakes of films, may I say yuck, the lyric took the time and care to craft an imaginative and thoughtful production. The lyrics theater is intimate with a three-quarter thrust stage, that is, a stage that juts into the audience, no curtain and no orchestra pit. Oh, did I say a live eight-piece band under the fine direction of Jonathan Goldberg accompanied the show? And microphones did not aid the actors. What a joy to hear real voices without the usual overabundance of volume and distortion. These two things alone are worth the trip. In the leading role of Huckleberry Finn is Cape Cod native Jordan Onquist. Jordan Onquist is exceptional in this role. His youthful and strong-willed characterization carried the show from beginning to end. His boyish mannerisms charmed most of us while acting, singing, and dancing. A frequent actor in many of Boston's finer theaters, his credits include a long run in sheer madness. One moment that keeps coming back to mind is Mr. Onquist's reaction to hearing of his father's drowning. In a moment, the boy crumbled with despair. The reaction was so powerful that there was an audible gasp from the audience. What is amazing about this production of Big River is that there isn't a weak moment in the entire show. Each new actor entering the stage is skilled and inventive and adds to the overall fabric of Mark Twain's world on the Mississippi River. Here's a short clip from the show to whet your appetite. You don't know about me without you read a book by the name of the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But that ain't no matter. That book was written by Mr. Mark Twain, and he told the truth. Mainly. There were some things he stretched, but mainly he told the truth. And I'm going to tell the truth in the story I'm enacting tonight. Look at here, huh? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? Well, I'll tell you right now. You better learn to read and you better learn your writing. Or you'll never get to heaven because you won't know how. In fact, sometimes it seems like everybody in the whole blame town of St. Petersburg is trying to tell me who I should be. Do you want to come to dinner? Let me be clear, this is not a hyped up, factory-like Broadway touring production, but a thoughtful and soulful performance highlighting the fine talents of Boston actors. Big River runs through October 8th at the Lyric Stage. I cannot recommend it enough. It's worth the trip driving over the bridge to Boston. For tickets, call 617-585-5678 Tell them John Murrell from Cape Cod Arts sent you.
Kevin, thank you for coming. Now, could you tell me and our audience what exactly is the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod? The Arts Foundation of Cape Cod is actually the regional designated arts agency and what we do is support, promote, and celebrate the arts on Cape Cod. So we have an important job because uh, we want to make people aware of the rich arts and culture uh, environment that we have here, which is really quite amazing. I've been here, I think I'm on my 14th year, maybe 15th year. Is it, is it my reality that the arts have boomed in the last 15 years? I, I think the arts have boomed, and we had a lot to work with to begin with. I mm -hmm. mean, Provincetown is the oldest artist colony in the United States. That's true. Uh, so we had a rich cultural heritage to begin with, and I think people have begun to migrate here, artists uh, who want to be here for a number of reasons, because of the beautiful landscapes, because of the rich theater community. Uh, there's a very uh, hot music scene here. So there's a lot going on here that attracts artists here. It's, it's amazing. Um, the, I looked it up. The Cape is about 417 or 15 square miles. And it, we, of course, go from Falmouth to, and Bourne all the way up to Truro and Wellfleet. And almost every community has multiple arts, arts organizations. Is that correct? Uh, they do. Every town has a local cultural council. And uh, one of the amazing things is that uh, the Cape ranks 16th in the country as uh, a place where artists live per capita. Which amazing. Is, it, it is. It's staggering. Mm -hmm. So we have a big job to do. And, and what we try to do is uh, promote the arts through events. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, cross-promotional marketing to try to get our name out there as a uh, cultural destination. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot with uh, education programs, um, you know, like the Creative Collaborative mm -hmm. and our winter art exhibit that this year is going to be wild things. Uh, and then we also are an acting foundation, so we actually give money. Uh, and we help to support artists, uh, arts organizations, large and small, educational institutions, schools, libraries and then non-arts organizations that are perhaps uh, doing an event that has an arts component. For example, uh, this summer we helped to fund Whale Week, which mm -hmm. was done with the Provincetown Center for Coastal Studies. And there was an art component to that whole event. Uh, it was very successful in July. Mm -hmm. uh, so we look at things that, uh, again, are uh, helping to fund innovation, but also helping to fund uh, arts events that are going to have some economic impact as well. You know, you talk about the economic impact, and I remember in June this year, you wrote an amazing letter to the editor, letter to the editor, editorial, and in it you discussed um, how the politicians in Kansas have uh, taken out of the budget all arts funding. Um, and I think their belief is that arts should sustain themselves. And you sort of, uh, you know, took off, you know, put on the brass knuckles and went for it. Do you think that arts organizations really should uh, be funded or, or they should be self-sustaining? Or how does that relationship work? Well, I think there are two things specifically about that. And I think the analogy I meant is uh, made is like in The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. But, you know, in the beginning it's black and white and then it goes to Technicolor. Oh. And I, I kind of feel that's what you're going to get with a, uh, a culture that is not funding the arts. Uh, you're going to have a black and white culture. Mm -hmm. But apart and aside from that, um, all uh, arts agencies need some seed money. Um, for, for example, uh, the Massachusetts Cultural Council does a cultural investment portfolio program. Uh, they fund many of the arts organizations on, on, in the Commonwealth, including uh, some of the most important ones on the Cape here. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, the, we can't sustain um, some of the arts organizations that we have without a little support. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, I think that they all do good work that supports the cultural community and also has an economic impact. I mean, we can't be completely dependent on beaches as our <laughs> calling card. Right, and, and restaurants, yep. Right, right. 
And I think that um, the arts have a very important role to play, and we are uh, rich with galleries and museums and local theater uh, in music that is really um, competitive with anywhere in the country. Do you really believe that? Uh, I absolutely believe that. So we don't need to go to New York to look at art? I don't think you do. I really don't think you do. Oh, I, and, and we're very lucky. We've got many sub-regions here. You know, if you take Guelfleet and, and Provincetown, I mean, there are many galleries of beautiful uh, art uh, artists that are there uh, in all mediums. And uh, you take a section like Dennis, where the Cape Museum of Art is. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many galleries around there. There's the Cape Cinema, which is kind of a classic. You can see the Met there. Yes. Um, the Cape Playhouse, um, you know, the, the, the list of uh, famous actors and actresses have, that have performed there is, is legendary. Um, on the other side of the Cape, you've got the Cape Cod Cultural Center that is doing so much to give an opportunity to artists uh, that are emerging artists, which is sometimes hard for an emerging artist to find a place where they can show their work or to perform. They, they do a lot with written work, poetry. So uh, there are a lot of sub-regions that are very rich and, and, and destinations, arts destinations, on their own accord. You, you talk about the, the cultural center of Cape Cod. <clears throat> That's a real success story, isn't it? It, it is. was a decaying bank Exactly. And I actually have done a concert or two there, and it's so cool because you're you're performing, and right to the left of you is the vault, right. um, and it's not a by any means it's not a traditional performing venue, um, right. but the acoustics are pretty damn good, and um, it it it's sort of finding its niche, right? Right, and and looking to expand. Yes. Which, by the way, they'll be looking for some funds from yeah. the Massachusetts Cultural Council mm -hmm. through their uh, Adams Grant program to be okay. able to do an expansion because they've gotten so many people that want to do programs there that they're bursting at the seams. Oh, that's great. Which just goes to show you what is really out there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you're talking about over, uh, well, almost 3,000 working artists here in all, again, in all medium. And, uh, you know, you talk about the economic impact beyond that. Uh, you know, the printmaker who makes the copies of the lithos, the frame shops. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are a lot of ancillary, indirect businesses. Um, but it's, it's a $30 million business, the, oh. the arts on the Cape. And I, I don't think people really understand just how much of an economic, uh, economic impact there is. And I'm actually working on an economic impact study with the Cape Cod Commission. Oh. Because I think that's one of the things that we as an arts community have to do a better job of is to communicate exactly what we do and what our impact is in the community so that people feel good about the funding, so that they understand that it's an investment. We're tax farmers. We're not just taking the money and mm -hmm. not doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, I read last week or the week before that congratulations is in order. Um, recently, Kevin Howard has been appointed by Governor Deval Patrick as the as a new member of the Massachusetts Cultural Council, is that part of the group you're in now, or no, okay. no? This is the state. Uh, basically, if you look at the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod as the Cape Cod arm in promoting the arts, uh, the Massachusetts Cultural Council is the state arm that promotes arts in the Cape. Uh, I'm sorry, in the state, mm -hmm. and and that includes the arts uh, and sciences. So they, they do a magnificent job. They fund all the local cultural councils in the state, okay. which is every town. Okay. Um, they do the big yellow school bus program, which helps uh, children go to art exhibits all over the Commonwealth. Uh, they do the Adams Grant program, which has been involved in every major cultural venue that's been built in the last 30 years, uh -huh. has had a piece of that Adams Grant money. Um, the Adams Grant money um, funds the Hyannis Arts, or uh, Harbor Year Arts, okay. uh, which is the artist shanties. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there's a lot of really good investment. And of course, there's a, there's a classic example. You invest in artist shanties, all of a sudden the waterfront becomes a walking waterfront where people are coming. They go, they frequent the restaurants, they, they're um, actually spending money on Main Street, and it, and it really extends that whole walk to the, to the sea. So. Wow. It's, it's really a, uh, a fantastic program. And Anita Walker, who's the executive director, is, uh, she's my hero. She is a very articulate advocate for the arts. 
Anita Walker, and yeah. she's in she's, Boston? She's or? the executive director of the MCC. Oh, yeah. so, congratulations. Yeah, That's so it's great. very exciting because I think we, we'll have more Cape Cod representation on the board, and it'll give me an opportunity to really see what else is happening both regionally and nationally that maybe we can bring back here and, sure. and bring success. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Um, so in your position at the um, Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, that started in January of yes. this year? Okay, yeah. so it's, you're sort of a baby. You're yeah, uh, yeah. still getting well, your feet. I feel like I've really <laughs> landed uh, in a, and, and feel like I've, I've really uh, uh, landed in a good place where uh, I got up to speed very quickly. So, Great. Uh, well, your, your previous uh, job was uh, the executive director of the Cape Cod Conservatory of Music, and um, I have no idea what you went through to create that merger with the um, Cape Cod Symphony, but I'm sure that was an amazing feat. And <clears throat> from what I understand, you were, you were instrumental in that. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that gave you a bit of uh, understanding well, of the game. Well, it does. It, it made me um, proud that we were able to, because I think that's sometimes, again, we in the arts community be, can be our own worst enemies because we don't collaborate, we don't look for synergies, we don't look for ways uh, that we can be more successful. And in this case, both boards came together and made what I think was a very wise strategic decision that's going to allow them uh, a long tenure um, to be able to grow. There's a lot of cross demographics there because you've got a younger audience at the conservatory, you have an older audience mm -hmm. with the conservatory, and over time uh, there'll be some real synergies there. Oh, so that's great. Very, very exciting. And I think um, it will help also in our quest to get a performing arts center, which is absolutely critical. You know, one of the things that I've studied. Um, in, in the new job and in, in terms of how we can be more successful in the arts is looking at one Berkshire, which is, um, the Berkshire has done, uh, has done a great job of really uh, articulating what the creative economy is because it, it not only uh, has economic impact directly, but it also attracts um, young professionals. You know, in today's day and age where oh. you don't have to have a physical property to run your business, Coming to a place that has a high quality of life and all the infrastructure and, and arts is an important part of that quality of life, like education is uh, for young families. It's an important uh, thing to be able to articulate that message. And the, one of the things that they have that we don't have is a Tanglewood. Uh, a oh, that's what you're talking about, Berkshire. A, oh, yeah, the Tang, uh, okay. And, okay. And we need a performing arts center here. It's, a, it's an important part. We certainly... Uh, I think have the uh, population to support it. We certainly would have a wonderful anchor tenant in the uh, symphony. We would be able to get you know off Broadway shows and uh, the kind of musical acts uh, that I think would sell out immediately. So I think there's a great opportunity, and maybe to make it multi-use with a convention center, so that you could. Uh, I know Nashville does this so it's sort of beautiful model. They just built a new. Um, performing Arts Center that uh, they're able to remove all the seating within an hour and a half and turn it into an open room with parquet floors. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So you see that and you say, we want that. How many seats are you envisioning? Uh, the, the optimum model would be between 1,200 and 1,400. Great, uh, good. And, and, and a box shape with, uh, that would really um, give excellent acoustics which I think is, is really critical. So when you say box shape, is that like um, the Boston Symphony, where they the perform symphony in Boston? That's sort of long? Right. Okay. Right, because you get that resonance. You get that, the, the, um, the bouncing, the echo. Um, it, it gives a much fuller song. You know, as a, as a singer myself, there are certain venues, places I won't go into, um, because it, it doesn't make you sound good, you right. know, or it's too much work. And then there's other ones I'll run to immediately. Um, and for me, most of my venues are churches, and boy, do we have churches on Cape Cod. But Cape Cod Symphony can't perform there, and, you know, some of the dance groups. And um, currently they're at the, is it the Knight Auditorium in, in uh, the Barnesville Performing Arts Center? No, the Barnesville Performing yeah. Arts Center, yeah. which... Is as, as good as it is, it's still a high school auditorium. Right. 
Um, and the symphony has become nationally known and maybe world, world class. They need a place. They do. So, um, so you're going to be the man to do it, right? Absolutely. Oh, I, great. I think that's right at the top <laughs> of the list of how we build the arts on Cape Cod. Yeah, uh, good. And continue to build our reputation as a cultural destination. I think that's really important. You know, the states finally realized the synergy between tourism, arts, and culture. Mm -hmm. They've created a committee to actually study that within the state. And we're very fortunate that we've got Representative Sarah Peake, who's the co-chair of that committee. And she also a tireless uh, advocate for the arts. And so, uh, you know, when I call her from time to time to talk about arts funding, um, she always knows exactly what is happening. I, I, I don't, it's preaching to the choir. You know, sometimes I feel like we're, I, I'm out there fighting it alone. Do you know what I mean? So it's wonderful that there's, there's your organization and there's people that actually believe this. I only have a couple more minutes. I'm going to bring you back again. But looking at, the, um, at your organization, there's different um, events happening. Um, the ones that I saw on the website immediately was something uh, called Passport to the Arts, Fall for the Arts, and then this is something I want to hear about, the first annual Fall for the Arts Masquerade Ball. Great. So, Well, as, as we talked about earlier, events is an important part of what we do because mm -hmm. that's another way to uh, raise the profile of the arts on Cape Cod. So Fall for the Arts is a really important uh, event that we've got happening, uh, which is going to celebrate uh, all of the arts uh, activities that are happening in the month of October. And we're going to have billboards on the Southeast Expressway with Fall for the Arts logos on it. Ah. Uh, we have a feature article that's going in AAA uh, Southern New England's uh, Horizons Terrific. magazine. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of press happening. We're partnering with the Cape Cod Times on this. So Cape Week is going to have a special section for the four weeks that run in mm -hmm. the month of October. Uh, and this is really free promotion for all of the arts organizations on the Cape to be able to get their message out about what they're doing. Um, we're doing kickoff concerts. We have four that we're personally coordinating. And then our closing event is going to be our Masquerade Ball, which is going to be a creative black tie. We've got artists from all over the Cape that are creating wearable masks and yeah. also masks that are going to be uh, centerpieces for the tabletops. And we're going to have uh, a little competition. We're going to give cash prizes. Uh, it's going to be... Um, uh, dancing with the Symphony Swing Orchestra. Oh, We've good. got a uh, Ballroom Bliss is going to come and do a ballroom dance demonstration and also do lessons because, you know, people go and they say, ah, I don't really dance. And sure. We're going to have someone there to help them with their uh, oh. two steps. So uh, so that's going to be at uh, Witchmere Harbor, which is just an elegant venue. It's, it's going to be a lovely evening. So that's uh, October 30th. And tickets are available on our website at uh, artsfoundation.org. So I'll put all the website information. Is, mm -hmm. is it best to contact through the website, or is there a phone number also? 508-362-0066. Uh, yes. Great. And we have uh, staff that are more than happy to talk to anybody mm -hmm. about Good. Uh, any of our events. You know, um, we're a membership organization. We've got over 600 uh, members. And each artist that is a member gets to have their own web page on our website, which I think is a great benefit. Mm -hmm. We have our uh, Voice of the Arts e-newsletter, which is sort of the de facto what's happening in the arts on Cape Cod. Uh, it's it's mind-boggling, frankly, I, how much how much is really going on. Um, but we also have uh, the Creative Collaborative that'll be coming up in the in March, which will be an opportunity for uh, artists and arts organizations to come together and talk about the things that they're doing and how they might work together and uh, some professional workshops. Mm -hmm. So um, then we do this little thing for 15,000 of our closest friends called Pops by the Sea. Yeah, right. So, uh, Got a little rain the, this year, right? Yeah, a little bit, but it was, it, you know, it, this year we had the Farrelly brothers and a surprise guest in Larry David who was right. on Rolling Stone cover the week before. So. Uh, it was upbeat because people were, uh, you know, getting in the mood of, okay, I, I guess this isn't going to be the optimum sunny day. So yeah. uh, everybody really had a good time. It was fun. Well, when you do stuff outside, that happens. Weddings, right. everything. So, right, right. Kevin, it's been great talking to you. I'm thrilled that you came and shared with us about the... Um, Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, and thank you very much. Well, thank you, John, for what you're doing to promote the arts. Appreciate it.